Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be getting started with SAS. What is SAS? It's, well, according to their website, CSS with Superpowers. It stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets, and it's basically a CSS preprocessor. You write code in SAS, and it compiles to CSS, and then you can use that resulting CSS in your website. So, let's get started with SAS. We have to figure out how to install this thing. We have to open up our terminal, and since I'm on Linux, um, I'm going to have some slightly different commands from you guys who might be on Windows or on Mac. Lucky guys on Mac, you should probably already have Ruby installed so you won't have to do this step, but Anyways, if you're on Windows or Linux, you're going to have to install Ruby. Windows, you can get uh, Ruby from their website. You can get the installer from the Ruby website, which is rubyinstaller.org, according to this link. But here on Linux, we're going to install it from our package manager. So I'm going to say sudo apt git install ruby. Enter my password. And do I want to install this? Yes. This shouldn't take too long, just install Ruby, and that will come with this gem package manager, which is the functionality that we need, because we need to install SAS. We need to run this command, gem install SAS. Uh, we also have to run this as root, so sudo gem, gem install SAS. Gem is a package manager for Ruby. It allows you to install Ruby scripts that have been uploaded to the public uh, Ruby Gem repository. And SAS is, the SAS language is written in Ruby. So now we have SAS installed. You can see that uh, SAS, oh, SAS version. That's what I want. Okay, so we have SAS 3.4.23. If you're watching this anytime in significant future, it's likely going to be a different version. But anyways, we have SAS installed. So let's get this up and running. So I'm going to change directories to my documents folder. And I'm going to make two directories. I'm going to make a SAS directory where we'll put our SAS files and a CSS directory, which is where we're going to put the compiled SAS which is CSS. SAS comes in two dialects, uh, the SAS dialect, which is indentation-based, and the SCSS dialect, which looks a lot more like regular old CSS. I'm going to be using the SCSS dialect in this video, but it should work either way. So let's go over to our SAS directory and uh, make a file. I'm going to call it style.scss. If you're using the SAS dialect, use SASS, but I'm using uh, the SAS, the SCSS dialect, so it's SCSS. So I'll make that file and then open it up in Vim. And what I'm going to write now is going to look just like regular CSS. So I'm going to say body uh, margin zero padding. Uh, 50 pixels. I'm just writing in random styles. Font uh, family uh, Roboto uh, sans serif. That looks good. Then let's make like a uh, hide uh, display none. An alert color red and background color yellow yellow. And blue alert color blue and a background color of yellow. Okay, so that looks good for now. And there is our file. Okay, so it looks just like regular CSS. But like I said, the SCSS dialect looks and acts pretty much just like uh, regular CSS aside from the features that SAS adds. So let's go and compile this. So I'm going to go back up to my documents folder. And then we have this uh, command SAS. Okay, and then it takes uh, what are we compiling? SAS 
uh, styles.scss. Or did I call it style? I called it style. And that is going to be compiled to CSS style.css. Okay, looks like it's done. Let's go into our CSS folder and see what we got. So it generated two files, style.css and style.css.map. The one we're interested in is style.css. So take a look at that. It's basically just the CSS that we wrote, although it has some funky indentation, which we are going to fix uh, by going back up and running that sass command again, except I'm going to give it this option, and that's style uh, compressed. Okay, so now if we go back to CSS and take a look at style.css, now it's compressed, it's minified, which is most likely what you're going to want in a production website. But it's going to be kind of annoying if we have to run this sass command every time we make a change. So let's go back up, take a look at this command, and we can add this option, and that is watch. Then it'll just uh, sit around and wait for us to change the file, and when we change the file, it'll compile it. And we can also just change these two directory names. So it'll compile everything in the SAS directory to the CSS directory. There we go. Now it's waiting for changes, so I'm going to open up a new tab here and change directories to documents and SAS. Okay, so we have style.css. And let's add some uh, SAS specific functionality in here, starting off with variables. We'll say uh, foreground color is blue except uh, not quite blue, we're going to use a function provided with SAS, it's called darken, and we can darken blue by 10%, uh, okay, and uh, see what that looks like. So I'm going to come over here and say, uh, no, not over there, I'm going to come over here and say that the color here is foreground col color, okay? And there's another SAS feature that's pretty nifty, and that is extending. So I can come over here and say extend alert, because these uh, blue alert and alert share the, the some styles. In this case, it's only one. It's a background color of yellow, but this will allow me to delete this. And then SAS will automatically uh, give the same styles that are provided to alert to blue alert. So come over here and it detected change so it wrote a new uh, style.css file so I'm gonna come over here I actually just uh, cat CSS style.css and now we have this and look the color is 00c which is SAS's way of darkening blue by what did I say tw uh, 10 10 percent I think it said 10 percent yeah and then also take a look at this blue alert just has a color of of uh, that blue and it, sass also detected that we were extending the alert with uh, into blue alert so it gave alert and blue alert all these styles and then just gave blue alert these custom styles all right, so there you go. That is how you install SAS, and that's a brief overview of a couple of the features of SAS. We'll get into more detail in the videos to come. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jacob, um, and have fun with SAS, guys.